<clears throat> okay, well, hi, I'm Sarah Hager. Uh, da, 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 da. There's a present button here. Um, yeah, so flower pricing and marketing for weddings. There we go. Um, yeah, and I am just gonna give you a heads up. I do want to go around and um, do like a quick little introduction here in a moment. So everyone, thank you guys for taking the time to introduce yourselves. Um, super helpful, especially to hear like how so many people are growers and really trying to figure out the pricing on that. Um, and I remember taking the journey person like business course years ago and really having a lot of thorough information about, you know, figuring out how much money you're putting into your crops and like trying to take amazing record keeping to get like a per stem cost. Um, and, uh, I am personally working on breaking that down better, but I can definitely talk about um like wholesale where to find like kind of a base for that um and uh yeah you'll see it's one of my goals later to work on record keeping um okay so um, a little bit about me so i was in maine for high school but i came to unity college um where you know mafka is for those of you who are unfamiliar with unity college um in 2007 and I started working on, I'm going to move you guys so I can see what I'm talking about here. All right. Um, I immediately was like, I want a job. And I got a job at a dairy farm. Um, Springdale Farm it is located in Waldo. And it's actually run, um, it's the Whitcomb family. And Walt Whitcomb was our ag commissioner for a few years a while ago. And now it's run by his oldest daughter. I'm sure his youngest daughter is probably involved a bit as well, but they have totally delicious meat and cheese that they raise out in Waldo. Um, after my sophomore year, I started to want to expand outside of, you know, being in a, in a parlor all the time and came to an organic horse powered, like mixed vegetable farm that also did quite a bit of flowers. Um, and that's really where I got a taste and a passion for flowers, I would say. Um, and farmers markets as well. They did a lot of uh, farmers markets that I would help with and I really loved the community aspect of it um, and worked on a lot of farms like since then um, from you know helping raise hogs to uh, dabbling in just like some no-till um, for free I would go over to like a friend's farm just to ride around on the wagon wheel like water wheel transplanter and like experience what that was like compared to you know, primarily horse and human powered farm. Um, after graduating, <clears throat> with a couple more years of working at Johnny's in the winters for about six years as well, um, wanted to give it a try as a journey person. Um, I was definitely probably overconfident in my experience and knowledge uh, and the fact that we had some free land, my partner and I at the time, um, and you Sharon right outside of Farmington, gorgeous land ever. Um, and I gave it a try with markets, which were definitely a lot harder when you're the one kind of in charge and like fronting the bill and relying on that income. So we got through a season of that. Um, and I was really kind of anti-social media, <laughs> which I found out like, you know, at this point that was not beneficial to me. Um, and after that season, you know, working with a partner, realizing you're on just different wavelengths, um, kind of separating our ways and ended up on my friend's farm in Palmyra, um, Cornerstone Farm. And she gave me like a quarter acre of land to grow flowers, which was so kind of her. And I did bouquets and sold them at Portland Market, um, which she had been attending for years. Um, and uh, yeah, so she really helped me out with like really getting a taste of some larger scale, like good soil <laughs> and, um, you know, the potential there. Um, yeah, so kind of where I'm at now is uh, my life now. So these are pictures from a really cushy camping trip, one of our camping trips this summer, um, my husband, Andy, and my two mutts. Um, so kind of after my journey person year, being a really, really broke post-college student, I was like, I need to figure this out. Like I need to make some, 
some actual money. <laughs> so I ended up going into education. Um, I'm in ed tech, which is what they call it in the state of Maine, but, you know, a teaching assistant, paraprofessional um, in special education. So I've been doing that for six years now. Um, 10 years kind of along the journey <laughs> up until now. And really, I think last year was my last year. I was leading camping trips part-time for a boys camp, taking them on backpacking trips. Um, when I really wanted to then start getting serious about starting the business, I got a part-time job after school being a BHP, um, which stands for behavioral health professional. So spend about three days a week after school for a few hours with this super awesome little boy with autism. Um, I didn't intend to do that for four years, but I loved him and his family so much um, that it was actually like quite heartbreaking to kind of have to part ways um, last May. But I was like completely way too busy to maintain that. Um, and uh, yeah, I love live music, camping and seafood. Those are some of the other loves of my life besides my family here. Haven't been to a show since the world opened back up and I'm really craving one, but uh, we'll get there. All right, uh, Bounty Bloom's journey. So we bought our land in Lymington in March of 2017. So we spent a growing season getting you know the gardens in some sort of place um that wasn't total disarray and so we started it like that winter and i took that winter to figure out how to run a business um or start that journey <laughs> so we're a micro flower farm six thousand square feet right now in production which is about a sixth of an acre um i have a very small csa that i cap at 12 members because that's about what I feel comfortable taking on between, you know, providing the DIY buckets and um, what I need for my weddings. Um, the last couple of years, I've really branched out on having additional arrangements available for pickup and delivery, um, which I'll touch on more. Uh, we do the DIY buckets and wedding design. Um, last year, we had 23 weddings. Um, that really was a total array of like a few hundred bucks to you know like five six thousand dollar weddings um so there's a lot of small ones in that number that number feels very big <laughs> for me personally um but i'm sure we'll surpass that number at this point for next year um and we just became an llc so i operated as a sole proprietor for four years and uh Still not 100% sure what the benefit of becoming an LLC was. A lot of folks were like, you know, that's the next step. Yes, if someone wants to sue me, they can't take all of my personal belongings. Um, but, you know, it's expensive. It's expensive to transition to an LLC. Um, but we just did it. Took the plunge. All right. This is, um, this is our property right here in the middle. And we have five and a half acres. Um, we're along the Saco River. Lymington is the furthest north point of York County. So we are technically in York County. Um, I irrigate out of the river for the gardens down here. Um, we have a small orchard that's establishing um, and we're gonna take out a little bit more trees through here to make more room for a tunnel in the next couple of years. And then I have a couple of gardens down here as well um, and you can't see, this is um, a drone shot that my friend took, but it looks like I hadn't gotten the chicken coop and stuff yet. All right, so I really try and be as budget inclusive as possible. Um, when I was putting together a wedding, we did, um, you know, really, I guess, maybe kind of middle of the ground on budget weddings. You know, we rented an Airbnb. We really wanted to be able to Hire friends. Um, you know, I have a one of my best friends is a great chef, and um, a lot of venues. You know, you have to use their vendors um, or things like that. So we rented an Airbnb also, so we could have our dogs. Um, but I mean, my personal budget for my flowers was five hundred bucks. So I totally get trying to do a wedding, um, especially when you have like a real love. Some of my couples really, really love the flowers and are excited on that, but have you know budgets that are around where mine was. Um, we do DIY buckets, as I mentioned. Um, 
and considering what that's going to look like in the future, we, I start them at a hundred dollars and they range up to about $150. And I really don't like giving a STEM count number because it really depends on the season. I like to talk to couples about what their plans are with them because sometimes dahlias are really inappropriate for what their plans are. Um, whereas like scabiosa is like, you know, you can get a ton of stems in there and it's really not filling a design a whole lot. So basically that price difference is based on flexibility and palette. So like totally my choice, a hundred bucks, um, 150 is like for primarily like a really like white, like white and green wedding. Um, and I narrow that from June through September. And part of why it's not my favorite is I, every once in a while, I can't always fill them. And so sometimes I have to fill them with like other local flower farmers blooms. Um, um, and every maybe occasionally like something from my wholesaler. And then what I mean by the exclusivity. So a lot of um, designers that I know have a clause in their contract that says, you can only exclusively use their flowers or their designs. Um, and I've had some moments where like tagging, like, uh, you know, a venue will share a bunch of pictures and tag me and a bunch of like not so awesome put together centerpieces. Um, and sometimes they're not even like buckets of my own flowers. Um, so I am looking a little bit about what that's gonna look like in the future. If I'm gonna continue that, or I'm gonna just be like, this is it, this is my choice, just whatever I have, which does seem to be what most people do um, who offer the DIY buckets. Um, so our full service weddings, uh, my minimum this year is $3,000. Um, it was $2,000 for a couple of years. And then I was just getting so many inquiries that I just had to try and stop it, <laughs> stop the flow. So I raised it to $3,000 and it did slow the inquiries down a little bit, um, which was just like for my own sanity, like people, people want wedding florists. Like there's definitely a need for what you're able to provide. Next year, 2023, likely I'm gonna go up to $4,000 minimum. Um, I know some of my friends have like, $5,000 minimums to start. And then maybe they'll open up the conversation to some lower budgets like later on in the season um, if they still have dates available. Um, so couples understandably have no idea where to start with budget. Um, that is one of my questions on my inquiry form. So I created a price guide. Let's see how these transitions go. Um, and I'll talk to you more about Canva here shortly. So this is what I send them in kind of my response back after receiving their inquiry form. And it's got an idea of where to start. And I found this helpful to create and send out because, you know, at this point I am booking bigger weddings and it kind of stops like some of the, you know, price shoppers from coming back. I'm like blown away at how much time it takes to respond to emails sometimes. And so I'm really just trying to find ways to make it so I have less emails to answer. <laughs> if people are really just shopping around and not very serious. Um, I am working on creating something more extensive than this, which is almost like an intro packet. Um, so things that have, you know, more information about Bounty of Blooms, um, you know, what we're about, talking more about like how we're trying to be, you know, sustainable florists, um, things, more specifics about our wedding packages and offerings. But this is where I'm at right now for the flower pricing. Sorry, I'm trying to get back here. This Zoom bar is like always in my way when I'm trying to do consultations and stuff. So I definitely gotta get it out of the way. Oh, I got some chats going on. All right, more expensive. Why is the white and green more expensive? Um, just because I'm gonna probably not have as much white flowers than I am purples and pinks and reds and all those other things. So, and it's super popular. So that's really why. Um, 
So basically the less and less colors that you want, the more I'm gonna make the bucket expensive because it's gonna make it so I am less likely to have those things and need to buy them in. And uh, that's really the reason for that. So close and porous. Um, yeah, thank you for asking about what size buckets. So I have found what I believe to be the best option for these buckets. I used to do like $5 deposits, but that's not always helpful. Um, or a lot of times I get the buckets back because people will pick the buckets up, you know, a couple days in advance. And then I go to the venue and do like kind of a full service setup anyway, and then retrieve the buckets then. So the best buckets for the best price that I found is at Lowe's and they're 10 quart like paint mixing buckets. Um, so they're white, they're really nice, like depth, like not too deep. Um, they have a handle on them, but that doesn't really matter. But those are the best price, um, even from like buying buckets at my wholesaler, they tend to be like really tall. And you know, for a lot of these garden flowers, they're just not super tall to begin with. I'm not gonna fit Nigella into like a huge five gallon bucket. Um, so those, that's the best, best and least expensive buckets I've found. Okay, into marketing. Thank you guys. I will try and pay attention to that chat. Okay, so really, I think this is probably the most important step in um, booking weddings is having a, a website. Um, I know personally, I don't tend to refer folks and I'm always trying to find more folks to refer to all these different, you know, like situations and budgets and clients that are coming in. I'm trying to find, you know, ideal people to refer them to. But I will say, if you don't have a website that I can really refer them to, I don't tend to refer um, to Facebook pages. So Squarespace is where I made my website. I am not good at technology at all. And it still feels like a miracle that I did it. So you can do it too. I promise you, it's just going to take some time. Um, my website's pretty general. It's $145 a year. We'll take a look at it in a minute. Um, I have an inquiry form on there and you really should too, just to kind of help clear up like how folks need to reach out to you. And, you know, I got an inquiry the other day with questions about, you know, someone referred me and they asked me like a ton of questions that were right on my website and they didn't answer about the inquiry form. I'm still figuring out what to do about them, how to answer them, but that was a couple of days ago. But find out what you can up front, give plenty of info on your website. A gallery is super helpful. My website has a store. Um, and this is gonna take us to Squarespace. <clears throat> Wix is another one that I've heard is super comparable, W-I-X, like very similar. And it is just amazing how many videos are on here to talk you through the process. Um, let's see if I go to like help just to get you guys a little bit acquainted to it. Yeah, so videos. I'm so glad I chose to do this at school. The internet is so much better than in my house. Um, yeah, so these are just series about it, but lots of getting started, you know, build your first site. Um, starting over, I've considered, uh, I think last year I was gonna like kind of start over and recreate one, but never did. Um, these are a lot of really specific or a lot of like kind of general, but I'm telling you, like I watch a video about like how to put a picture in your website, how to format. So you have two columns of text, like they really, really breaks it down for you. Um, and I thought I would walk you through my website a little bit. <clears throat> Very simple website. It's, it has the tabs at the top, but if you scroll through, it takes you through the tabs. And I kind of like that layout. Um, Sometimes you can really hop around a lot on a website, but I really kind of like that it just scrolls through. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I have my tabs up here. Over here, like this would take me to the, the pages that I'm on now. Um, design, 
you know, putting your logo on. Cool. But commerce, so like I have a store. You can see a lot of like analytics about <clears throat> where people see. It's been a while since I've looked through all of these tabs, but um, you can see a lot about how people are viewing, when people are viewing. Apparently, yesterday, quite a few people looked. Um, yeah, so I put up here, you know, that arrangements are currently unavailable. Um, booking, you know, mention what you're booking 2022. Um, this talks about, you know, what we're here for, what we're all about, our options between full service design, our buckets. Um, I really try to highlight these are the months they're available. Please don't come to me in April <laughs> with a request for that because I do not have a tunnel or availability for that. You know, I added this last year about, you know, what I am hoping, you know, uh, giving them some ideas of the process or retainer. Um, I mentioned mentioned somewhere, like, make sure our designs are like what you're looking for. Um, I don't get a ton of it anymore, but you know, I'm not here to design with like flowers that really are exclusively wholesale, like baby's broth and roses, like not here for that, my friends. Um, I can help send you in the right direction, but you know, if our designs aren't what you're looking for, like please don't inquire. <laughs> um, my friend's little succulents that she makes, our flower CSA, you know, a little bit about what a CSA is, you know, where imported flowers come from. Um, I do my bouquets at 20 bucks plus tax. Um, they really kind of vary. In the beginning of the season, they start maybe a little bit, a little bit smaller. And by the end of the season, when I just have like, you know, dahlias are just big. And like, this is kind of where I start like in July, you know, early July. Um, some pictures there. Definitely, I'll of course something about you. Um, people like people are really into, you know, locally grown flowers. So we're all in the right place with that in mind and wanting to get those out into the world and weddings. And pretty much wrap it up with my inquiry form here um laid out with uh, you know the inquirer's name partner's name email address these are all starred you know being required date of event location of event how many guests are you expecting that one was kind of a post-pandemic add-on um you know especially in the beginning i mean it's a good question to still know but especially in the beginning when people were like, we're in the middle of the pandemic and they're like, I'm having a 200 person wedding. And I'm like, I'm not gonna be available for that, sorry. Um, I don't star budget because again, people are just really gonna, I don't want anyone to feel pressure to put a number there. Um, most people, even when it, um, they do feel like they need to put something there, say, I don't know, or to be declared. Um, and then I'm just hoping for what other information they could get some people's inquiry forms are like, how many wedding party members do you have? How many of this are you needing? Are you expecting this? But this feels like enough for me. And I love to know how they hear about us. And my gallery is not my favorite setup in the world, but it was what was available for this template that I used. Um, and I need to update the pictures a bit because I probably haven't put any new work on here for a couple of years. Um, that in my website. I wonder to you and your business to decide to do full service. Um, how large is your team? Yeah, team is a great question. Um, uh, okay, so the reason I started this business was to be able to afford to build my farm. So I kind of went into it pretty quickly knowing that that's what I wanted to do. That's where the money was and that was gonna get me to my goals the fastest. Um, so I kind of jumped right in 
Um, and I guess I should start before I started Bounty of Blooms, there was about four years where I did like small scale things, bouquets for people, um, mostly just like pickup orders. So I had four years of that and like only using local flowers, which was great. Um, but it's limiting um, in, a, in a way. Like you're my superhero if you do like awesome full service weddings, totally locally. Um, so my team, so I'm really building my team right now. It's been a, been a, the me show for a while, the me and Andy show, I should say. Um, Andy helps me not so much with design, but a lot of other things from garden work to like cleaning the house to cooking dinner. Like when I'm like knee deep in flowers for like a few days leading up to weddings. Um, I, this year brought on a high schooler to help me in the gardens for a while. Um, but, uh, you know, 18 year olds, they, they find other interests. <laughs> so she kind of, um, left early on in the season, right after I was starting to teach her design stuff. Um, uh, but now I have another local woman who's, um, you know, around my age and, um, she joined me like a month ago and she's awesome. And I'm really learning to expand on, um, reaching out to freelancers. Um, so I can come back to that a little bit or remind me if I don't touch on that more um, because that's new to me but I have been collecting information and I can talk more about like paying or what I have learned um, about what a like freelancer um, is usually paid. Do you have an agreement or a clause regarding getting photos from photographers? How do you go about using photos for social media website? Yeah, so my old contract prior to being reviewed by a lawyer um, just had a question on it are you okay with um, me sharing your photos after having a conversation with your photographer? Um, I just wanted to like feel that out. And I've always had people say yes. So um, what works the best and photographers are really amazing about this. So don't feel shy about it. But after the wedding, um, if they or the couple don't share the gallery with you within a couple of months, um, feel free to reach out. And I, I do both. Sometimes it's like if I know the photographer more or if like the client and I are like really pretty tight because sometimes, you know, they're really cool. Um, I'll ask either one for like the gallery. A lot of them are open to full galleries and I really like to experience like and see what the whole like shindig was like. Um, or I'll say, you know, select um, group of pictures of the florals. I would love to see that, you know, of course. I'll tag you. Um, and if the photographers have any, not qualms about that, but maybe have been like burned in the past, they're gonna like tell you the rules. They may even have this happen the other day with a totally epic photographer couple that have been doing this for decades, sign like sign an agreement on like the rules and like have you read over a little bit of a contract and then they send you <laughs> um, like, not the gallery, but like specific pictures. So that looks totally different depending on, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about tagging and stuff, but I like if, so specifically in this gallery, actually I haven't checked this in a while, but if I click on a picture, that's where I'm gonna see the uh, like tag. So in my gallery, you don't see it so much, but in, oh, no. Um, throughout the website, like I have it underneath, but then in the gallery, if you click on it, it shows their name. All right. Websites, okay. Social media. This is funny because I just realized I did not do the first thing I said to do on here. But you, so you're the face of your business. Um, I've heard this from like trainings I've been to and my face is on my Instagram profile. It's not on my Facebook profile, but I have to admit, I don't take Facebook very seriously um, for my business. But they do say like putting your face in your logo is just super personable, helpful. Um, you know, telling your story through posts or in your little write up um, on Facebook um, or Instagram. Um, just personally, again, I don't take Facebook very seriously, but I have put out ads and stuff, especially when I was trying to build my CSA. And I haven't found the ads very effective. Um, however, I am always surprised at how many people say that they found me on Instagram. Like, it's just way more surprising than I expected of how effective it is. 
as a free marketing source. Um, and I'm thinking that like those couple of hashtags is probably what drove them the most to me when they find me, like main florist, main floral designer. Um, and maybe like a year or so ago, I really started to practice stories more and it definitely reaches more people. Um, it keeps people a little more engaged. So it took me a while to like get the bravery to like figure out stories and I definitely like screwed some up, but um, doing the stories and in Instagram is definitely helpful um, for keeping people interested, I would say. All right, Canva. So this is what you looked at earlier with the pricing guide. Um, some of you might be familiar with Canva. It's a great marketing website or tool. Um, I upgraded Canva Pro last year because it was taking me a lot of time to like just sort through all these pictures. And if you upgrade Canva Pro, you can put all of these things in folders. So it just makes it so much easier to find what you're looking for. Um, you can create Instagram posts. So, you know, your own personal picture with like words over it to get a message across easier. Um, printed material, I've printed posters off from it before. Style boards and proposals, which are, I will talk about here shortly. Google, um, I just wanted to mention Google real quick because it was something I found recently helpful and annoying. Um, so I registered my business with Google because I always wondered like, oh, when I like type in a business, there's like that little corner that tells me all this information about it. Oh, I should probably have that. Um, so I registered and I just like suddenly just got tons and tons of phone calls for flowers. And I was like, damn, this Mother's Day after the pandemic started, like people really want flowers. And it wasn't until I realized, oh, it's because I put my number out there in the World Wide Web on Google. that that's why everyone was calling me for Mother's Day flowers that I was not doing. Um, and so I would say my con here, besides lots of phone calls, is you can't really define your business very well. You can just put florist, um, not like event florist. You can put that you're open by appointment, um, but then you can't really put like, you have to put business hours or if you don't put business hours, you have to put like temporarily closed or something. Um, I called my friend recently and got her voicemail and was like, wow, you are so smart. Like my voicemail is just like, hey, this is Sarah. Thanks for reaching out to Bounty Blooms. But her voicemail was like, we do not have a storefront. Like we are an event florist. Um, we do not, we do not do, you know, uh, arrangements and deliveries because those are, you're going to get tons of calls for that. So I was like, I really need to do that to my voicemail. Smart. Um, but on the other hand, like it, open up this world to like doing these delivery arrangements, which was a great way to make some extra money and get rid of some extra flowers. Um, collecting reviews on Google, that was the primary, primary reason I wanted to do that was to um, get away from like the not very effective review collecting on Facebook and have it on Google, reaching a larger audience. Um, a little mention that like calendar and drive are everything to this business. Um, we go by Bob for short, which my husband and I totally cracked up about once we realized that that was like an acronym for it. And it's funny, like all sorts of wholesalers, like write Bob on all of our orders. Um, my minimum delivery fee is $50 arrangement. And then I calculate delivery based on the IRS's mileage of 56 cents per mile as well as my time, how far away it is, how long I'm gonna be in my car. And I collect tax on it like I, like I should. Um, but yeah, calendar and drive is just like, so helpful for organizing and Canva and really what keeps me organized. Pinterest, that's a picture of our most popular pin on Pinterest. You know, there's like quite a few pictures that's like, 10 views, like 80 views. And this one's like thousands, like 16,000 views this month. Um, and it's funny, I see this, not even necessarily mine, but Avon, the photographer, she's based out of Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, Charlotte, South Carolina. <laughs> um, her pin circulates a lot too of this picture. And I find it on like people's style um, inspiration boards on Pinterest. 
Um, so it's great for gathering inspiration. I do find it really helpful when couples do put together a board to give me a really good sense of um, what sort of design they're trying to curate, especially for their flowers. Um, I do find it really frustrating. <laughs> My notes when I was like kind of outlining notes before I started this was like frustrating garbage. Um, so I can find it very frustrating sometimes when, um, so there's a lot of, you know, Pinterest, again, great way to send people to your website to drive business, but it's a great way for people who do fake flower design to send people to their Etsy shop for a, you know, a faux flower bouquet. So there's tons of fake flowers on there and they're so good sometimes that like even I struggle to tell the difference sometimes. Um, and then it can also really skew like what's realistic for people to expect their flowers to be like, especially on tighter budgets um, or even not very tight budgets. So those are kind of the negatives of it. I really get frustrated by how many fake flowers are on there sometimes. And I uh, have to have that conversation with couples sometimes. So, you know, just so you know, like Pinterest is really tricky, but everything you sent me was made of faux flowers. So like the shading's a little different and having those conversations. Um, but some people really, really find it effective to drive people to their website. I haven't really paid attention to the analytics of how effective it is, but um, yeah, a lot of people like totally crush it and say it's like they're everything to driving people to their website. Oops. <clears throat> Um, just a few other mentions of some marketing um, items, you know, business cards. Um, my first business cards I got were from Vistaprint because it's super cheap. Um, I did find them to like rub off after a while. Like if you put a bunch in your wallet, you know, they definitely tend to rub off after a while. Um, and then my second batch I got was from Moo um, and they're super high quality. Um, a lot of great options there. Pamphlets and posters I've primarily done when I was building my CSA. Um, I don't really market for my CSA much anymore because it's, it's capped at how many I feel comfortable taking for right now. Um, we do Tobago Brewery um, in Gorham. There's two in Gorham, <laughs> but one of them is the actual brewery. Um, so that's where our pickup is. Um, so I used to put up like a poster in there that I made on Canva um reviews so you know asking for reviews is important for future clients to kind of see sometimes i'll put pictures of your designs in your reviews um i tend to wait about whenever it becomes convenient but like four to six eight weeks after um and check in with a couple and you know say what a pleasure it was and you know i'd love to do you know, have a review, I'll like put them, give them a link to it. So it's super easy. Um, and then merchandise, um, you know, wearing, wearing your business, your event, just a great way of branding. Um, people know, people are pretty much going to know that you're the florist there anyway. Um, but yeah, it's just an effective, you know, you can sell them. I haven't gotten into a ton of merch personally. Uh, da, 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 da. Did you sell to florists? If so, were you curious if expanding to full service weddings could impact your relationship? Um, so I never did sell to florists. Um, we're small enough that like everything that I did, I did for my events or my CSA. Um, but um, I don't know if you came in a little bit later, um, but I did mention like, it's just crazy how much of a need there is for people to help with wedding flowers, um, the community um, is is huge and it's very friendly and really not competitive. I know that's been like was a concern of mine and is a concern of a lot of people that you don't want to be like in competition with anyone. But it's just such a need that it's all really feels more like a community and not a competition, like truly. Um, so I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be afraid of that. And in fact, I would say. You know, if you do sell to florists, oh, totally fine. I just saw that you would come in a little bit later. I didn't really touch on that, but um, if you do come in, um, oh yeah. So if anything, I would say like that florist that you start selling with will be like a friend of yours that refer, you guys refer to each other back and forth. 
yeah thank you elena um if anything it's it's more of a partnership truly which can be surprising when you're not familiar with that at first um but yeah the only thing i was saying before is just there's a need there's a need for you all um mailchimp that's something that i got my act together with this year um because i felt a little cheesy about just kind of ripping off a quick email between who knows what to my CSA, like there's a pickup tomorrow. Um, so I joined, or I, you know, uh, joined MailChimp. I went with the free option. Um, the free option basically means there's like a couple of templates you can choose from, which is not a big deal. Um, you know, the whole point is just kind of getting some color on there, a nice format, a couple pictures, um, just something different than a quick, <laughs> quick stressed out email ripped off to them at who knows what time in the middle of the night. Um, there's a ton of analytics you can track on there that I do not pay attention to. Um, the one thing I do pay attention to is I'm really like working on my CSA customers being a little bit better about being on top of the pickups. Um, I do every other week. Um, I transitioned to that a couple of years ago because my five, I do a five and an eight week. So it felt like the five week was just so quick when it was five weeks in a row and they missed out on a lot of later season stuff. Um, so I use it for CSAs. I can imagine it being really wonderful for workshops. Um, you can link it to your website, which again, I don't do, but you can link it to your website to, which you've probably seen this on a million websites, like join us and give us your email and we'll send you information about us. <laughs> Um, send you information about upcoming workshops, things like that. I do think, and I was thinking of this as I was putting it together, I think it would be really excellent to check in with your clients, you know, especially if you're booking them a year or more in advance and they booked you because they think it's totally badass that you're a flyer farm and just sending them these like check-ins, like, hey, this is what's going on on the farm or like happy holidays. Um, I think it would be great for stuff like that. Uh, so Webstaromp store, I always have a hard time saying that, is a great email, um, great website that has a lot of restaurant supplies and I get my corsage and like boutonniere boxes and stuff like that from them. And I suggest them because they, you can buy like 10 or like a dozen of something to try out. Um, once you decide that that's the size that works for you, then you have to buy like a case <laughs> for like a hundred something dollars, but it's great to be able to try some smaller sizes out. Um, and so I have stickers that, you know, I use my stickers to close up my butcher paper on my CSA bouquets, but I also put them on those boxes. Um, building your language around marketing. Don't use the word cheaper. Um, I think that's something that, you know, people are probably pretty familiar with, but cost effective. Um, is great, you know, less of an investment might work well too. Understanding um, or learning more about like the names of aesthetics or vibes for things, you know, rustic, boho, modern, timeless, natural, whimsical, um, kind of familiarized with some of those things would be helpful, as well as understanding um, depth, using things like depth, movement, texture, um, yeah, just to really give a give a visual on design. And I always tell people like, people don't know what this process is supposed to look like. So just say it with confidence and they're gonna believe that everything is going all right, even though you're choking on your words or something. <laughs> confidence. Okay, five o'clock. Um, just a real quick, like Wedding Wire and The Knot are like wedding vendor websites. Um, I'm not on any of them. Uh, so websites that vendors register with, they're very expensive. Um, scammers often target vendors through these sites. So you, you get like a lot of, you get, I've heard that also you can get just like a lot of inquiries that just don't go anywhere is what people seem to say about that. Um, and I've heard that customer service is a nightmare with it, but that's all I really have to say about that. Um, I'm not part of it. All right, vendor relationships um, and, you know, florist relationships of other sorts. So referrals from vendors is where most of my business comes from. And I would have to say at this point, mostly from other florists. Um, once you've worked at a venue um, and you felt like it went well, 
you know, you can uh, reach out and ask to be added to their vendor list if they have one. Um, that's a really great way of kind of building a relationship. And um, it feel, it's really nice to like have certain venues that are like your go-to, like you know the owners really well, super comfortable there. You know, it's nice when it's not that far away. Um, and then uh, responsibly refer as best you can. So that's where I kind of like gather information about especially like other florists, um, like who does DIY buckets as well? Like who has, you know, a minimum or like doesn't have a minimum or um, where are they located? Sometimes it can feel really hectic, so I don't do it very much. And a lot of other vine um, folks aren't doing it very much anymore either, but it's nice to kind of like reach out ahead if you know them really well and be like, hey, do you have this date available? This is a budget um, before you like, mention them in an email or something like that. Um, something that I heard recently is that uh, photographers really appreciate it when you have like a few extra flowers and you can leave them behind for like detail shots. Um, not all couples value this, but you know, things like the invitation suite and like the rings and like the tie, like all in a flat lay picture with some extra flowers. Um, or, you know, typically, you know, I always charge for cake flowers, but if you have some extra um, and, you know, the cake artist or something and be like, would these be helpful for you? Um, those little things like people remember. Um, the main wedding network, sorry, I'm kind of flying through things. Um, so this is started by a woman named Maria. And this is really where I kind of got like more of a start. Um, but by no means do you have to have done this to really feel like you're getting your foot in the door of full service weddings. But Maria started the main wedding network. Um, and pre pandemic, there were these yearly get togethers um, called meetups. And I was asked if I wanted to do one, they kind of get like a newer vendor of each kind of realm of the wedding and get them together and host um, different than a styled shoot, which I'll talk about, like more like a like an actual event. Um, so I was the florist here at Beach Ridge Barn. We did like a couple of different table setups. Um, these are other things that she's hosting virtually, you know, probably back in person soon, but she has these fireside chats at her place in Brunswick. That's all about a certain topic and caps at like a dozen vendors, which is nice. Wedding drinks, um, I've been to a few of those and those will be like hosted at different like breweries or places where um, people get together, vendors get together and chat. Um, I attended one of her pin, her, her Pinterest workshop, which was like super informative, but um, I'm just busy enough that Pinterest isn't really <laughs> priority to me. Um, and there's a Facebook group, which is very helpful to kind of ask questions of, um, refer people. All right, so styled shoots. Um, this was something I was not familiar with until I kind of started doing weddings. So it's when all these creatives get together and donate their talents to create material for them all to use. Um, it's a great opportunity to create designs that you'd like to do in the future or you want to challenge yourself to do. Um, and as florists, you typically have the higher cost. Um, I've been to some that had um, food, like the um, caterers you know, provided food, that was probably pretty costly as well. Um, but it's always fair to ask to help cover cost of flowers. I did a ton without any money. Um, so I will say it's kind of at your value, like how you're feeling about it. I really needed some pictures or I wanted to have, you know, some fun. Um, I, in a lot of instances, was using flowers that were in my garden. Um, but really at this point, <clears throat> and again, you should just feel free right from the very beginning if that's what you prefer. Or where you're at to ask for some money to help cover the cost of the flowers first in these style shoots you'd be donating your talent but asking to cover flowers is very appropriate um <clears throat> editorials is another term that's used for it so some people's goal is just to get the material other people's goal is like get in magazines or get on blogs um which i've been published in like some blogs and such as well with other vendors but and so some people put these like these like really popular wedding blogs or website, like logos or patches on their website. Um, I don't have any of those, I don't find them necessary, but those are some people's aim. Um, and then something I learned about this year, I was really pumped to get some <clears throat> yellow spring flowers and some pictures. 
But then I realized afterwards, it was a huge like learning moment for me that I paired with a photographer that was very, very moody in style. And the yellow didn't really read at all. Um, so understanding photographers' styles and editing and then like color and flower choice is, is really something to consider and something to talk about your clients with. Um, I had one client who I knew her photographer, you know, I asked her photographer and I looked at their work and it was very bright and like really true to color. But she really liked this picture that was from actually the same photographer it was very moody and really muted things and was like, I want these flowers. And I was just like, awesome. Like this palette's so fun. I love it. I do want you to know like this photographer's styles are from your photographer and these colors look really muted compared to how they look in real life. Um, and she was totally cool with that, but it's just like a learning moment. Um, yeah, I have a couple of slides of just some designs. Like in this one, I don't get, because my DIY buckets part of it, um, but I don't get a lot of inquiries for like larger centerpieces. So I was aiming for getting some photos of some centerpieces to be able to show people. Um, these are just kind of some more fun, like wacky wearable things that I, um, created for some different shoots, wanted to play around with giving a try, really. Um, so tagging. Um, so during our consultation, I collect all the vendor information um, or that those that they have booked at the time. I don't post anything until you consider where you got the pictures, um, stories included. It's really easy to be like, you know, a venue shares a picture. And you're like, boom, put it in my stories, but then you forgot to like tag the photographer, even though their posts have a photographer. Um, and then it's important to mention it in the post rather than just necessarily tagging in the picture. Um, this is just something I screenshot off my Instagram. Okay, pricing. So how do you guys really know where to start with the wholesale price of things if you're not um, you know getting those lists right now so I'd say the best place to kind of gauge is for to google the Boston ornamental terminal prices and um, this comes out every week I believe and you can look through it's really like ugly and unfriendly to look through but it is an order by um, varieties uh, or flower types and it even gives you like how many stems per bunch and the cost so that is a good starting point and I would say like really, really rural Maine, I would say even if you're in really rural Maine, kind of base it off of that um, because that's really what we're all, we're all supposed to be kind of on a level field um, in terms of how we're pricing things. Um, but to, that being said, starting out, you know, doing things in Palmyra, I was definitely not charging prices to these like little backyard weddings of things that were coming out of my garden. Um, but that is a really great starting point because even if you are in rural Maine, if you need to, if you're starting to do these full service weddings, you're going to be paying these, these types of prices, um, if not way more, because then they need to get out to you. Um, so you need a resale certificate to purchase wholesale, even from local growers most of the time. Um, and you get that through the state. Um, Keep track. So basically what that means is you're, you're going to buy these wholesale flowers without tax. Then you're going to be paying prices, uh, paying tax to the state, either quarterly or by um, annually. And you're going to be paying them the tax that you're charging your clients, which is five and a half percent, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, always just do your best to keep track of your time and how you're paying yourself. You know, you might realize how much time you spent leading up to the wedding and then looking back and being like after you have bought in these flowers or calculated what you pulled out like value that you pulled out of your land oh shoot I paid myself like three dollars an hour uh, okay um consider extra these are all just things I've kind of like learned throughout the way um consider extra costs like parking fees boat fees um I was really scared of this one for a while, but then I kind of realized the best way to get out to these island weddings um, is to hire a private boat rather than really, unless you have to drive, unless you have to drive very far, that's not true. On like Peaks Island or an island, you do need to take the ferry with your vehicle, um, but you can look that up and, and 
charge more than what you're paying. Um, a private little boat fee, if I'm going right to like a wedding right on the edge that I don't need to drive, like that's like 50 bucks one way. So I'm gonna charge like 80 bucks, you know, them each way. Uh, tolls, if you have to worry about that. This is the formula for um, pricing out your flowers. So three to four times the cost of wholesale plus a 30% design fee. I've had people do like, I've seen anywhere from 20 to 30%. This is like a high, the higher end. Um, I do three times markup and quite a few of my friends that are also like, like do bigger weddings than I do, do three times. Um, and we all kind of do things a little bit different, but this is like a formula. Um, and you're gonna have to figure out, this is definitely time consuming and I am trying to find a way to streamline this more for myself rather than chicken scratch on paper, which I do right now because I'm kind of like to handwrite things. Um, so finding out a formula and then basing it off that, which I'll touch on a little bit more. Uh, my delivery fee is the mileage, you know, that 50 cent, 56 cents per mile, again, both ways there and back, um, plus how long it's gonna take me. Set an hourly rate for yourself, as well as anyone driving with you. Um, I kind of, I, I do about $25 an hour, and I think that is where most folks are at. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if other people are paying themselves more, but $25 an hour is pretty standard um, cost for if you need to hire a freelancer to help you um, based on the couple of freelancers I've spoken to recently and my friends who hire a lot of freelancers. So $25 an hour. Um, set up fee, 20% the total of the design. So everything, you know, you've calculated all these designed items, you've added them all up. So this is again, kind of based on like a standard industry formula. Take 20% of everything you added up and that's gonna be your setup fee. I do it differently. I like to kind of estimate how long it's gonna take myself and or a person or two to do it, um, calculate how many people and at the hourly rate. That's personally how I like to do it. Um, you know, my setups can be really anywhere from, and you know, sometimes some designs or some factors of things, like maybe something's not set up quite in time, the arbor is not up. Um, you know, that gets kind of skewed or whatever, but yeah. So my, I'd say my setups, like sometimes I'm there at like eight or nine in the morning and leaving at like two-ish. All right, so here's a little, like an example of a formula that you would create. This is a small centerpiece. It's actually, um, there's a picture of it on the next page. So centerpiece, you know, a dollar a stem for a tulip. There's three stems in the design. I'm marking that cost up three times, $9 in tulips, you know, rose at $2, just one rose, marking it up three times, $6. I add these items all up. I'm at 58.50 and then times 1.3 to give me, to add on that 30% design fee puts me at $76 plus hard goods, which is on the next page here. Um, doo -doo -doo. So yeah, do you mark up labor at all? So the labor is kind of where that 30% design fee is um, right here. So this is kind of your labor, that extra 30% um, is, is your labor. Um, or I like to, again, more calculate how much time is going to spend me to do things. Um, I'm not going to lie, because this can be so time consuming, sometimes I kind of like slap some numbers on there. <laughs> um, I don't always calculate out everything perfectly, but that's because I've done it and I'm kind of familiar with where the number is supposed to land. Um, and uh, yeah, so that 30% is your labor. So plus hard goods. So right now, just in flowers and my labor of designing, 76 bucks and plus hard goods. So that's what the centerpiece is right here. It was in like this small little urn. Um, you know, that urn probably cost me like four or five bucks. So 10 bucks for that, $85, 80, you know, $85, $90 for this, believe it or not, is pretty on point. 
So if the client is purchasing it, in this case, this couple did, um, I'm going to mark it up what I'm going to pay for it times two. And if the client's renting it, there's some things to consider, like, do you want this back? Is this something that you want taking up some of your precious space, my precious space? I don't have a lot of space. Um, and, uh, you know, if it is something you want to keep on in your inventory, then by all means, like, rent it to them. Uh, some people don't rent it for what they pay for. They rent less, which I think is kind of crazy. I rent for what I'm going to pay for it, including like shipping and everything. Um, in case it doesn't come back or it's broken, it's already paid for. So it's really no, no sweat. Um, oops. Oh, geez. Sorry, guys. We'll be back out of here for a second. Okay. Um, another way that some folks do it is that they take deposits on it and the deposits are more than they paid for it and they end up returning money. And that's, I tried that for a while. It seems like more work than I wanted to do. Um, and then a consideration is to, when they're renting, like send the boxes, talk to the planner, talk to the family member that's kind of like, you know, in charge, which is usually nice when it's a planner. And bring those boxes, bring that paper for all those things to go back into for safe transportation back to you. It's in my like contract, you need it back by seven days. Um, you know, it's all outlined in the contract about what that'll look like and what happens if not. Um, you know, just that I'm gonna invoice them. Uh, so sales tax remains five and a half percent and you charge that on everything, including your delivery fee, except for your setup cost. Um, and so, yeah, so all of your items, your delivery fee, but your setup charge does not get taxed. So Maine is one of five states where it's illegal to pass like credit card surcharges onto your clients, um, but you can offer cash discounts to pay without card. So I know sometimes people are like, I mean, credit, I get it, credit card fees add up, but we can't pass that on to people in our state lovely state of Maine. Um, don't itemize for price shoppers. There's been a couple of times where people like ask me to break it down more. Um, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And first time I did, and they like, and, you know, they, I, they didn't book with me. <laughs> I booked with someone else, less expensive. Um, and the second time I was like, you know, this is just the way it is kind of like, this is, this is how I break it down. Um, you know, let me know if any, you know, I'm happy with your budget. Let me know like how I can help you here. Um, always considering your time, you know, those bud vases, especially it takes so much time to clean those up and like put them away, processing all those flowers, cleaning up a mess. Like you're going to make a mess. You're going to come home to a mess after doing like <laughs> a wedding. Um, lots of cleanup, putting things away. Okay. My booking process, Whew, trying to go through this. I was so worried about filling 45 minutes. It's amazing how fast it is. Uh, right. Do you always break down weddings or do clients do it themselves? Yeah, great question, Elena. Um, I rarely break down weddings. Um, and I talk a little bit, looks like one of my goals at the end is kind of figuring out a better way. Like I don't do any foam because foam is, you know, terrible for the environment. But also at the same time that I get stressed out about the fact that <laughs> I'm not actually reusing any of this chicken wire, or these little water tubes for arbors and stuff. Uh, but they're getting thrown away anyway, um, because most of the time my clients aren't paying for me to come back or hang out, which God forbid, I would never, some people do, but I do not want to hang out um, <laughs> and wait around for things. Um, but uh, yeah, so right now, I unless it's like one of my um, favorite venues or a couple of my favorite venues in Sebago that are pretty close, and I'm like, you know what, it's worth it for me to just drive out there and collect all of those things, um, which for the most part for me is just the Arbor materials. Um, anything rented, they're required to bring back to me. Um, so directing clients to your inquiry form, get that budget if you can. Sometimes the responses that come back to me without the budget, I, you know, I, I send a pretty wordy email back, um, just giving them as much info as I can. And I say, you know, just to, you know, make sure that the um, 
you know, our, our consultation is going to go in the right direction. And I have a plan for the consultation. Like, do you have an idea on budget? Um, especially after I give them all that pricing information. Um, so responding with info about pricing your services, ask for that inspiration. Um, you know, we're really not intended to be the planner for them. Like really if they either hire a planner or they you know, figure it out themselves, figure out what they like, you know, um, I get kind of stressed out when people are like, I don't know, I don't know flowers, I don't know color, like give me nothing. And I kind of, I'm like, you know, I, I tell them, I tell them to go to like Pinterest or my website um, and like find some things that they like just to give me, give us somewhere to start. Um, so style board. So this is more work than some people like to do upfront before a consultation, but I find it really helps me with booking. I think it is a really effective tool that um, helps me book my clients and I find it makes my consultation much smoother. Um, so we'll look at that in one second, but my consultations were locally really when I was doing more local folks, but now I would say most of my customers are from like Massachusetts or beyond. Um, and it's via Zoom, um, but I'm open to having it be local again. Uh, learn about the couple, ask about how they met. You're, maybe you won't be surprised. I met my husband online. Everyone seems to meet their husbands on some sort of app these days. Um, use the style board to discuss the vision. Think through all the logistics you can, and those aren't necessarily going to be in your mind when you're first starting, but as you learn and I'll, you know, I'll show you my proposal, you'll realize there's, there's logistics to figure out. Asking about those other vendors, explaining the process as you go. Yeah, responsible turnaround time for responding to inquiries. Um, mine right now, so I actually stopped booking. I was like getting in all these inquiries and, you know, having all my fall weddings and, you know, dealing with finishing and wrapping up the gardens. And so I stopped booking. And I'm telling people, you know, I'm, I'm coming back. Like I got a list, totally cool. If you want to reach out to other vendors, um, but we're taking a break based on, you know, giving priority to our current clients and getting these gardens wrapped up for winter. Um, but I would say my turnaround is a little bit slower now of getting those initial emails back at probably like two or three days. Um, a lot of people say like 24 hours, a lot of people do, and that's an ideal world. But I think two or three days is very, respectful still. Okay, so this takes me to Canva, where I do my style boards and my proposal writing. And I tend to, I tend to like to create two palettes unless a customer really is like, this is my palette, which is great. Um, but this is what I'm talking about, being able to organize in files. So <laughs> boho tastic, um, just the nickname of like a lot of boho designs pictures of greenery, kind of like some venue, reds, moody designs, um, orange, ooh, that's a broad turn, broad turn farm, BK right there, boots and corsages. Um, so, you know, it's branded, I've got the couple, I've got the date, I've got the venue, and I have a couple of palettes that I've put together here, just Googling burgundy, <laughs> like grabbing a picture of burgundy. Um, and these are, I, I also like to ask people if they have like an aesthetic that they're going for, um, or sometimes I'll make up these words based on what information they've already given me without necessarily using like a vibe. Um, so I give them some examples of flowers that are in season. Um, my aim for this is really to find out what they love, what they hate, what's speaking to them, what's really not. Um, Part of my goal is having more of these be my own designs, but I do pull a lot of them from Pinterest. Um, a lot of them I pull from people's, like what people have emailed me. If they've emailed me stuff, I'll definitely be putting them on here or from their Pinterest boards. Um, and I'm asking things like shape, I'm asking things about like size, about texture, about the overall amount of greenery or movement that they're seeing. If they like, you know, I've had couples like, like their designs being like all kind of like bigger focal flowers. Um, this is another, the second palette I put together, which is the palette that we went with for the wedding. Um, and again, just a, a lot of pictures of bridal bouquets for sure. Uh, 
this example particularly has a lot of pictures of bridal bouquets. Um, I pull some things on here and, you know, I, sometimes I'll tell them, I was like, these are, some of these are pulled just to ask about size, you know, size relativity. Um, like for example, like this, like I would, how do these feel for bridesmaid sizes? Um, you know, I ended up making some compo arrangements for this wedding. Ooh, more broad turn farm flowers. Uh, this is the venue that they were at Granite Ridge. It's my first time there. It's beautiful. Um, yeah. So I put these together really just to ask some questions about likes and dislikes. Sometimes I'll put like kind of like crazy, you know, seed pods or something on there, especially if they mention that they like grains and stuff and be like, is there anything that you don't like on there? And very rarely do people say they don't like something. Um, no formal training, <laughs> really self-taught. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I totally feel you on the concern of um, not holding up in design work. Um, and sometimes I get pretty stressed out about that too, if it's super hot out, like I hate July weddings, but really, I mean, August can be hot too. Um, and, uh, so you do have to, have to be a little bit, a little bit of trial and error on having things hold up, um, in heat, like certain dahlias, like these ball dahlias, like pretty solid in anything, but like cafe au lait or like bigger dahlias, like, like, no, not, not happy when the sun is going to be on that arbor. Um, but uh, yeah, and then greenery. Greenery is another thing that definitely you're gonna be doing some trial and error on. There's a lot of greenery that I have to have in water tubes for designs. Um, but I will say like, I've originally started going to wholesale flowers for greenery because there's so many more options and they're so sturdy um, that they don't need any water source. Um, okay, so that's my style board. That's what we go over during the consultation. And I'm asking them questions about logistics as well. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry, yes. Okay, so proposal. This is going to be the detailed write-up of the logistics and the design that we talked about. I'm like scribbling in my notes during consultation, like, oh, they love like you know, second color palette, top right design. This is what they loved about that. And like taking kind of all these chicken scratch notes that I'm gonna to put together in this. Um, I categorize the pricing, which you will see. Well, actually this is the categories of the pricing essentially, not itemized. Both the proposal and the contract are gonna be signed by the couple. My contract was written by a lawyer. It's a lot of fancy verbiage um just to protect you in court because they like fancy verbiage um but it's totally worth it uh it did cost me about a thousand dollars to have a lawyer write my contract for me and I gave him uh, a contract that I essentially got free online and created myself or you know edited for myself um and I gave him my proposals so he had like a lot to work with but actually putting it into a document was like a thousand dollars of his time um, I got DocuSign recently because again, I'm not super tech savvy and I just kind of like throw these documents as PDFs at people hoping they're pretty tech savvy at signing PDFs, but I purchased DocuSign and it is so easy. So I upload, uh, my contract is like, um, just a Google doc and that I, I download as a PDF. And my proposal is from Canva that I download as a PDF. And then I upload them onto DocuSign. I put the couple's emails and names into DocuSign. They zip them away into email. And then they, you open it and you literally like, it just guides you through all these documents, like click here. And I set it up. So I'm like, they need to sign here. They need to initial here. This is where the date needs to go. Um, this is the cheapest DocuSign. I can get five documents a month, which is all I really need at this point. Um, I'll just kind of spread it out if I'm getting <laughs> close. My retainer is non-refundable. It's 25% of the total. I use Stripe for credit card processing. Um, and I use Stripe because that's what Squarespace uses for my store. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. I am starting to transition to QuickBooks for better accounting. I haven't quite pulled the trigger on that. That's like my winter learning this um, 
winter. I do a 30 day check-in. Um, the final payment is 30 is due 30 days out. So I do a 30 day or like a 40 day check-in just to go over everything. Cause I realized I wasn't doing that. And I was like stressing myself out about remembering everything like the way they wanted it, even though it's well outlined in the proposal. And I was like, oh, duh. I mean, it just makes sense to check in with them. <laughs> um, Cause so many things change, especially table count. Not surprising that, you know, some people don't come. Um, okay. Again, proposals on Canva, branded, their name, date, venue. I always put a picture of the venue on the front. And I go right into logistics. And I put my contact information and all of this stuff is also on the contract. Um, and the contract is really both of these documents, but they're all signed together in, in DocuSign. Um, the client's contact info, date of event, location, just really specific with address, especially when it's like a private residence. Um, coordinator information, you know, their business name, if they have one. Um, what time I'm gonna plan to be there. Photographer name. What time the ceremony starts. Definitely important to collect. So, you know, like really what time you gotta get the heck out of there. Um, most of mine, um, back to like Elena's question, most of mine has this verbiage in there that we're not responsible for breakdown or cleanup after a wedding. And I put this on here um, to bring that up because I, and I'm trying to get people to possibly want me to do breakdown um, so that I can like collect these materials and reuse them again. But not surprisingly, most people don't wanna pay for you to go back out there. Uh, rental, some information about getting rentals back. I've got their, their like vibe. And I, so here's the personal section. Um, one bridal bouquet, loose organic garden style design, which basically means like, you know, more flowers that we would be growing or versus like a lot of uh, hydrangea and roses and stuff. Um, outlining the color palette, you know, the shape, um, design slightly elongated in shape for ease of holding, variety of foliage and autumnal shades and various shades of green, large in size with Kelsey's height of 5'8", considered when designing. Um, as someone who's almost six feet tall, I definitely am like getting better at designing for people who are like 5'1". Um, and, uh, and that's why I like having a mirror in front of you is helpful when you're designing, um, little tip. Um, so for bridesmaids, you know, there's gonna be like neutral linen ribbons just around like the binding point and boutonnieres, pin on corsage. And then again, like I do a categorized cost ceremony and this proposal is a little bit wordy i i've been known to be wordy in general in life but you know this is a two-piece installation design on the upper left side of the arbor design will extend above and below the angle of the arbor so it was kind of like house shaped um so it was like going across this angle and then a little bit on the side here um I'll mention things that are gonna happen with items that I really have nothing to do with sometimes, like the insulation um, can be cut down by coordinating staff and repurposed at the reception. Um, didn't actually happen on sweating because it ended up being indoors because it was very miserable last Saturday. She did bud vases. So I broke down, there's gonna be 13 eight foot farm tables with bud vases. Each table will have two clusters of three bud vases. Each cluster about uh, two and a half feet from the end tables. Um, that's really specific. Don't worry about that. Um, six bud vases per table, 30 tables, 78 bud vases. This is where it talks about they're going to be various heights, you know, small, medium, large, um, two compote arrangements, kind of the, the size of the container. Uh, this is a rental breakdown um, cylinders for their bouquets, the bud vases, the compotes. Um, rented them for 35 bucks each. Didn't even pay that much. I did, well, I intended to pay that much, but of course what I wanted was not available <laughs> and I waited months for it and ended up with going with a cheaper option. But yeah, so I charged essentially what I 
paid or that I paid in the past, like for these bud bases, like I've used these bud bases for a couple weddings, so I'm still gonna pay what I paid in the past or what I would pay to replace it. And then I break it down payment wise for them. Um, so here's the categories, here's the rental. Um, I need to start, but I just haven't changed this yet. I'm gonna start doing delivery and setup separately because again, setup you do not charge tax for. Um, so for my own, like I have notes when I go do my taxes, like this was my setup fee that I didn't charge tax on, but I should itemize them that way as well. Subtotal tax and total, how they can pay. Retainer is this much. And then I take what's left over and I break it in half. So, and then this ended up changing because they had less tables. So essentially it was 1608 both times before and the due dates, this is 90 days and 30 days out. And then where they're gonna sign on DocuSign. All right, so that's an example of that. And again, like this will be recorded or I can share this with, with folks. Um, really where I got a lot of this stuff um, will be, mentioned at the end kind of some extended or towards the end some extended learning uh, so day of i typically start my day of delivering the personal items i tend to show the bride um you know it's typically a bride uh, how to hold the bouquet i always remind them don't hold it too high it's like some crazy instinct to like hold your bouquet high while you're walking down the aisle like think like hip bones um that the pins for the ribbon are on the back so they should be facing her you know, her. Um, I put corsages and things in the fridge where there's space. Um, put out designated pieces, like other elements that I might have to set up inside. I typically do the arbor last. That doesn't always necessarily work. Like sometimes the ceremony, sometimes will be at different locations entirely, but you know, the ceremony comes before the reception. So sometimes the arbor kind of comes first after delivering personals and then I'll like go move indoors. Um, I would really always suggest bringing an assistant um, of some sort, even a bucket carrier. Um, you know, I think I've had two weddings where I completely forgot the ribbon for the bouquet. <laughs> I had my mother-in-law at one point this year running to Joanne's and like finding a fabric that would work to wrap the damn bouquet. Um, and sometimes I wrap them beforehand and sometimes I don't, but I like to wrap them when I get there at least the bridal bouquet, because then it's not all wet. Uh, yeah, I will totally share this with you guys after. Thanks for asking. There's me and my branded shirt. All right, these are some things I bring. Again, uh, a lot of things here, but I have like a tote, like a handled tote that has compartments that I fill with stuff, tools, materials that are just helpful. Um, these are things like I bring a ladder, a tarp for easy cleanup, a broom, um, crowning glory and quick dip. Um, you guys are, I wasn't familiar with these at first. So crowning glory kind of like is a spray that seals the like stomata up of the plants and keeps the, keeps them hydrated. Um, and quick dip, I, I bring with me just in case. There's a couple of things that tend to crash kind of easily like, uh, like that burgundy hibiscus foliage, for instance. So if I'm gonna be using it in something, definitely putting it in a pretty solid water source and I'll probably quick dip it beforehand. And it's like an acidic based solution that just like, like makes things drink and hydrate right up. Uh, quick talk about challenges of the pandemic and post pandemic. I didn't actually add this to my contract, but there was like an obsession with this topic at first about the force majeure clause being added to your contract. Um, so it's when something catastrophic happens and it basically alleviates parties from their responsibility because something catastrophic has happened. So it's kind of like supposed to save your butt, but I haven't added anything like that. Um, verbiage around retainer versus deposit. So deposit insinuates that money is gonna come back to somebody. Um, so really you should use the word retainer. Um, they're retaining your services. You know, you're putting a lot of work in before you even get that retainer. And essentially you're holding the date. So you're telling other people no. Um, some people, especially uh, venues use booking fee um, in place of that. Um, and then there's definitely been some supply issues on getting product and cost of things going up. Um, 
yeah, so some improvements and goals of mine, always record keeping. I think most of my goals are really around like our homestead and farm in particular. Um, soil health and like kind of having more of a closed loop nutrient cycle, um, which, you know, we brought in ducks and chickens for primarily for pest, well, really only for pest management and closing, like having that nutrients from their manure and their spent um, hay and stuff. Um, I have a huge grasshopper issue, um, which is uh, noticeably better after having ducks this year. Um, it's like totally insane. They go up to the stems of like scabiosa or lavender and they just chew right underneath the head of the flower. And then it's just like all these stems and you're just like, really? Um, accounting is definitely something that I'm cleaning up this year, especially now that we're in LLC, there's like, I feel like there's like very little wiggle room <laughs> for kind of screwing up with that anywhere. Um, I'm choosing QuickBooks rather than really going more. My husband is, works in accounting. Um, so he's like our accountant essentially, but we do have someone else help us with taxes every year that we've been doing for a while. Um, but for when I need to hire someone in the future, um, QuickBooks is gonna help. So I figured I'd get the process going with QuickBooks now. Um, sustainable floristry um, strikes. So strikes is a term used for cleaning up after an event. And um, yeah, again, just wrapping my head around like, um, you know, telling my clients like about how that's important to us and like, you know, having them have similar values around us going and collecting things or in some way getting them back. Um, when rentals are coming back, I do leave like a, I do send them with like a contract or a trash bag. And I'm like, if you have room in your car, like, please put the, like cut the arbor down and like put it in there and bring it back and I'll compost everything and I'll reuse everything and it'd be greatly appreciated. Um, it's also like, but like is driving out there and like the gas, you know, that I'm doing, like negating the fact that I'm going to reuse some of that material. It's a, it's a weird balance I'm trying to figure out. Um, and trying to be better about thanking people that refer me. Um, you know, it's hard to keep tabs and track of sending these like emails and stuff. I was thinking maybe like a holiday type thing when things slow down in the winter just being like hey you're the best thanks like some like some florists I just get so many referrals from um and I'd like to get to a quarter acre of production um with a little bit extra and cover crop to rot do more rotating um we're getting there <laughs> um our soil was total garbage um and we actually dug out of our land like basically a landfill from the previous owner um so it's been a, a lot of labor and getting it to a better place, but uh, yeah, we're getting there with it. Here's some other educational resources. There's a lot of people out there now, um, but these are really where I gained a lot of my knowledge. So Floor Society, um, I, this will be my third time. I think like every other year I purchase their online conference and it's awesome, it's 200 bucks. And it's like an outrageous amount of information from all of these different designers. Um, and then lots of things like lots of templates, like where I've gotten these like style board templates and stuff. Like this was just material that was given to me from purchasing like some of these online, um, online summits. Team Flower is amazing for free videos. Um, you go to Team Flower's website find like the educational link and it is amazing. You can watch so many free videos about so many different things related to um, even like things like growing certain things to a lot of like some really complicated designing elements. Uh, Jessica Zimmerman, I um, she has online courses as well as Passion Flower Sue. I've never bought in any of their courses, but I've definitely hit up their free content. Um, Passion Flower Sue is great. I have a, a one of her books and she's great to follow on Instagram for inspiration. And then these are just some Facebook groups that are also helpful. Um, these two, you actually Floor Society, this one you have to have bought their online summit to get access to, but the other ones are free to get into and utilize. Okay. That was it. Um, 
Awesome. Well, thank you guys. That's hopefully how much information I got through some great questions.